Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is the Goddard Ballistic Missile Family, three variants of liquid propellant medium-range missiles. Iran's liquid propellant design team, after making significant design changes to the Shahab-3 during its development, finally acquired sufficient expertise to undertake a major redesign of the basic Shahab-3 platform. This heavy redesign led to the creation of the Goddard family of medium-range ballistic missiles. The objective was to develop a liquid propellant missile with enhanced range and payload capabilities, one that could be pre-fueled in underground facilities and transported out for launch. A ballistic missile that would be militarily effective primarily against large area targets such as air bases. The primary external difference between the Ghadr and the Shahab-3 was the three conic re-entry vehicle. Compared to the Shahab-3's large conic re-entry vehicle, this design offered a higher ballistic coefficient, improving accuracy when equipped with a unitary high-explosive warhead. The fuel was changed as well, and the large scud-like guidance compartment was replaced with a miniaturized guidance system that required less space. The initial variant of the Goddard family, known as the Goddard S, is identifiable by its large aft fins similar to those on the Shahab-3. For the Goddard S, the occident remained unchanged, but the fuel was switched to UDMH, extending the missile's range to 1350 kilometers. Believed to have entered service around 2004, this variant featured a Iranian-produced motor and a miniaturized guidance system using dynamically tuned gyroscopes, which reduced weight and space compared to the previous generation of Iranian guidance systems used in the Shahab-3 and Shahab-2. With all critical subsystems being Iranian-made, the Gadar S became the first Iranian ballistic missile to be produced in large volumes, comparable to the production levels of the Shahab-2. It also marked the first liquid propellant Iranian missile to not require cooperation with the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The Goddard S incorporated all advanced features of the Shahab 3, including the separable re entry vehicle and the retro rocket system for thrust termination and velocity trim. The circular probability of error, CEP, or accuracy, is estimated between 400 to 300 meters. This accuracy is yet militarily significant as the primary warheads for the Goddard family are submunition warheads. While unitary high explosive warheads also exist, submunition warheads are much more practical given the missile's accuracy. The Goddard family has a unique feature in this context. At the time of its development, Israel, the primary adversary for which the missile was designed, had already developed the Aero 2 ballistic missile defense system and had US Patriot systems in place. The strategy to counter these systems was to target large area objects such as air bases, Israel's most critical military assets, by striking them with sub-munition warheads released in outer space where neither the Aero 2 nor the Patriot is effective. Despite the up to 400 meter CEP, releasing sub-munitions at high altitudes would result in very large dispersion. This means the 300 to 400 meter CEP would increase to kilometers for exo-atmospheric submunition release. However, this level dispersion is still sufficient to target large air bases. It is financially not very practical for a missile defense system to intercept single submunitions, of which there can be 10 or more per warhead. This relevant military capability of the Goddard S was the reason the missile was produced in larger volumes than the previous Shahab-3. In wartime, the ability to suppress air power through periodic strikes on air bases is a valuable capability for Iran, given Israel's heavy reliance on conventional air power. The Goddard S has also been fitted with lighter submunition payloads, such as the submunition warhead developed for the Shahab-1 and 2 Scud variants. When equipped with these warheads, exo-atmospheric submunition release is not feasible as each submunition would need a heat shield to decelerate sufficiently and avoid premature mid-air detonation. The increased range also allows the Goddard S to be based in underground missile bases further from the border. In summary, the Goddard S represents the intermediate step between the Shahab-3 
and the principal representative of the Ghadar family, the Ghadar H. Following the Ghadar S, the Ghadar H was Iran's first medium-range ballistic missile to be produced on a truly large scale. Visually distinguishable from the Ghadar S, the Ghadar H features smaller aft stabilization fins and elongated fuel tanks, significantly altering its size and shape compared to its predecessor. The tank layout was revised to balance the center of pressure and center of gravity, incorporating a common bulkhead for the oxidizer. In addition to larger tanks, it is believed that the missile's structure transitioned from steel to aluminum alloy, reducing weight and enhancing kinematic performance. These design improvements are thought to be influenced by the Soviet R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missile, which later lead the development of the Khorram Shahar missile. During the early 2000s, Iran was beginning to integrate some of the R-27's technologies it got into the new Ghadar family. These changes significantly boosted performance, increasing the range from 1,350 kilometers in the Ghadar S to 1,650 kilometers in the Ghadar H, while maintaining the same 650 kilogram warhead. Missile testing began around the mid 2000s, and by 2006, the Goddard H is believed to have become operational. This variant met all the requirements for operation within Iran's underground missile bases. The unfueled booster stages, devoid of explosive material, could be safely stored for extended periods and only presented a risk of explosion when brought to the mating area with the warhead and liquid propellant present. The road mobility of pre-fueled missiles allowed for quicker operations compared to the Shahab-3. The increased range enabled to construct underground bases deep within the Iranian heartland, making it difficult for adversaries to reach them with conventional air power. The Ghadar H saw its first combat use in 2024 during Operation True Promise when Iran launched retaliatory strikes against Israel. Approximately 20 years after its initial service entry, a notable amount of Ghadar H missiles were launched against Israel and its missile defense systems, which was warned in prior, allowing preparations to defend against strikes. The submunition warheads of the Ghadar H could be seen released from a very high altitude, distinguishable by larger and smaller glowing objects descending at different speeds. The larger, faster descending objects are the large exo-atmospheric submunitions, while the smaller glowing objects are likely flares designed to create thermal signatures to confuse sensors and missile interceptors. The Goddard H likely also generated false radar returns, creating a chaff cloud that increased the chances to break through for other ballistic missiles with unitary warheads. This confusion might explain why empty spent boosters of the Goddard H were also targeted by Israeli missile defenses in some cases, confirmed via footage erroneously wasting costly missile interceptors on those harmless spent boosters. Since its service entry, the Goddar H has undergone some upgrades. These upgrades include two variants of maneuverable re-entry vehicles, MARVs, deriving technology from the Qiam-2 and EMAD missiles. One variant is less advanced, suitable for lower re-entry velocities at shorter ranges around 1300 km, while the more advanced variant is also used on the latest EMAD versions. This high-end variant may also possess evasive capabilities in addition to precision targeting, which is the basic function of such MARVs. Notably, the Ghadar has been observed in use by Ansarola in Yemen, giving them a potential reach to hit Tel Aviv if it's the lastest variant, the Ghadar F. To enable the construction and equipping of missile bases deep within Iran, the Ghadar F was developed as the final main variant of the Ghadar family. This variant extended the missile's range from 1,650 kilometers in the Goddard H to 1,950 kilometers in the Goddard F. A significant redesign of the missile's motor was undertaken, changing the oxidizer from IRFNA to N204. This step allowed Iran to master the fuel mixture of the Soviet R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missile, serving as an intermediate technology step toward developing the later Khorramshahr missile. This higher energy propellant mixture has an operational limitation as it's only usable in low temperature conditions, not much above 20 degrees C. However, this was not an obstacle for Iran's operation mode, which intended to use the missiles just outside heavily hardened underground, rather cool, missile complexes. The mobile launchers of the system would not need to spread far from the home base, but would simply exit the underground tunnels, launch, and return. 
the Goddard F's fuel tank design is believed to have been further improved over that of the Goddard H, optimizing space usage to increase the fuel load. The Goddard F remains a rather secretive missile for Iran, seldom displayed. It represents an intermediate step from the Goddard to Emad, allowing for a smooth transition of products and production lines. In summary, the Ghadr variants are highly practical missile for Iran's underground missile bases and their operation modes. Subsequent upgrades to portions of the arsenal with maneuverable re-entry vehicles now enable effective military use with unitary high-explosive warheads, while the remainder of the arsenal retains submunition payloads for exo-atmospheric release to suppress airbase operations of regional adversaries. The high survivability of Iran's underground missile bases underscores the value of the extensive production investment in this ballistic missile for Iran's IRGC aerospace forces. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you. And... Have a great day.